Very good morning to everyone. Thursday, the 16th of January. Hope you're doing well. Um, in terms of what I'm going to talk about is a little bit on updates in regards to the, the signing of the phase one of the US-China trade deal. Where do we go from here? Uh, a few thoughts on that. And then a look at the calendar. But that's pretty much it from me because it's pretty quiet from a, a news headline point of view. Not a great deal of things going on now that that major macro event has kind of passed. Um, but definitely Sam's got something he wants to get off his chest. Uh, walked in this morning, was just getting his coffee, started brandishing some pretty bullish noises about US equities. And I uh, don't want to stitch him up too much, but uh, I definitely don't disagree with his view. And so he's going to come on, spend perhaps a little bit more time on the mic uh, to give his two pence or two cents, depending on where you are. Um, but in terms of the charts this morning, uh, in reaction to the trade deal signing was, was pretty much as anticipated. Most people have already really factored this in. The, the details had already come out prior to then the actual symbolic conclusion of that part of the event. And so uh, limited real reaction. If anything, US equities again just just about touching fresh all-time highs, so kind of a perfect storm for Donald Trump in terms of um, the way of which he can express the success of that uh, deal. Uh, the next part now, of course, is about what happens with, with phase two. It's been a little bit mixed between the two sides about exactly when that's going to begin. Uh, following on from yesterday's phase one signing, which the US President Trump said work on phase two is to begin as soon as phase one begins. Uh, VP Mike Pence remarked that phase two work has already begun, but the Chinese have said this morning that it's unwise to rush into phase two negotiations, stating Beijing has little interest in immediately doing so, adding we may get nothing if we rush part two before completing part one. So uh, as we were kind of suggesting yesterday, I don't think that's uh, any of those comments particularly that shocking. I don't really think phase two is really going to get underway personally, my, my view for another several months because everyone's going to want to see uh, the legitimacy of really can China remain compliant to their commitment to buy what $200 billion worth of a variety of different imports from the America over the next two years, which we'll, we'll look at. Um, so overall in the market, um, sentiment is really classify it as positive. We're kind of in a bit of a neutral gear at the moment. Uh, we're kind of lacking a little bit of emphasis on, on the fundamental side. So with that being said, then, uh, markets do need something to take their cue from. And, and typically, then, this is where um, people might put greater emphasis on the technical setups of the various different assets that are trading with the, the kind of distinct lack of fundamentals. Uh, corporate earnings season, I don't think, is going to provide that trigger point. Uh, there's no one really that substantial or significant or is there that much of a volume of corporate earnings hit in the market at the moment. Uh, earnings season doesn't really start to ramp up until next week and the week beyond that. Um, it's just kind of the the banks at the moment and we already really know generally what the situation is there having had already quite a few of the, the main Wall Street names report. So yeah I definitely would be looking at this trade story as, as you know I, I wouldn't have it as a uh, a real directional driver for saying want to be long, short, different assets uh, at this point. It's kind of more um, just looking at, at key technical levels, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, from a trade deal point of view, I did just briefly mention it, but I did want to show it on a graphic. Just make it one notch smaller so you can uh, see it. Just give me one second while I scroll to it. Um, this was the detail behind Beijing's $200 billion buying spree kind of promise in order to get this deal done and over the line with US President Donald Trump. And you can see here the two colors denote the breaking of year one and year two of the kind of phased in element of the buying of four different areas of, of imports from America, agricultural, energy, manufactured goods and services, uh, manufactured goods being the most. but. It's just quite phenomenal, really, um, just, a, just the size of this. Uh, and certainly from an American point of view, uh, not only have you got a fairly accommodative 
monetary policy where they're kind of in a holding pattern at the moment and on the balance of things you would say if anything they're more likely to cut than than hike uh, in combination then with um, the likelihood probably of quite aggressive fiscal pledges as Trump goes into trying to cajole sentiment into the second term and now with the underlying commitment of China buying copious amounts of goods from America uh, in fear of reprisal if they do not now that they've signed this agreement yeah, it, is, it is all looking a little bit gravy over the medium term for for America and, and Donald Trump uh, this of course coming amid the house still looking to persevere with their impeachment uh, of the president but again as we've we've said over the over the last couple of weeks I don't really see that as just political noise on Capitol Hill rather than anything influential for prices day to day um, with that being said, there was something from the Chinese side um, that I did see. Uh, just giving you the highlights here. Uh, this was coming from an official overnight who said that the People's Bank of China, the Chinese Central Bank, will keep liquidity at reasonable ample levels by flex, flexible or flexibly using monetary policy tools like the reserve requirement ratio, the medium, uh, the lending facility that they have, open market operations. Um, and basically just continuing to do what's necessary uh, to avoid any kind of disruption in their local economy. But a lot of this stuff, particularly um, liquidity injections at this time of year, seasonally do coincide with the build up to the, the, the domestic mainland shutdown that you get over the, the new year period. And Chinese New Year kicks off in about nine days now. Uh, so none of this is too surprising, but you know this is another thing about that overall general outlook still remaining relative positive. Not just because of all the reasons I just discussed there with America and Trump, but from a Chinese point of view, the deal also does then put a bit of an end, at least in the short term, to some of the negativity, which obviously was a real risk factor uh, to one you know the largest emerging market in the world. Um, last year, which was the significant economic pressure that they were experiencing through the escalation of tariffs. And now this is kind of on hold for the time being. There's kind of a mutual agreement here that the lack of escalation with the additional stepping up of the PBOC and the natural fiscal forces in China. Um, yeah, it's hard, it's hard not to, um, to be fairly now upbeat about the, the the future despite some of the obvious risks that are out there um, that's it really from me uh, nothing really too much obviously the conversation is all quite high level uh, top view macro rather than anything so much specific intraday uh, definitely would be more interested to hear what what Sam's looking at as key levels to watch across the different asset classes from an actual calendar point of view uh, this morning, not really too much uh, of interest. You do have the ECB minutes coming out uh, at 12.30 London time, but uh, ECB minutes by default are, are dated. I don't think they're going to be of particular relevance or have much in the way of market moving potential later on today. Uh, then in the US, uh, regular weekly jobless claims at 1.30 alongside import-export prices. You've also got Philly Fed and US retail sales. So. Uh, perhaps then uh, a US focus session in, in regards to potential catalysts that could dictate some of the sentiment when the, when the Americans come in and the, the general volume overall starts to pick up. Um, Speaker-wise, Fed's Bowman voter neutral stance, speaking specifically more on the housing market, um, that's going to be at 3 p.m. Then ECB's Christine Lagarde is also speaking at 6 p.m. Obviously, the ECB president, always worth monitoring. Uh, Bank of England's Haldane is also speaking at 6 p.m. at an event in London. And from an earnings perspective, as I said, there's not really too substantial, at least from an index trading point of view, from a single stock uh, perspective. Jeff Bank of New York Mellon, though, reporting ahead of the opening bell today. All right, that is it from me. Let me hand you over to Sam. Any questions, though, feel free to leave a comment on the video on YouTube. And if you're watching this and you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure that you do subscribe. Uh, we'll have these daily updates, of course, but we'll also have live events of which we'll also be covering the Fed on the 29th of January live via the YouTube channel. So hopefully I'll see you then, if not before, and have a good day ahead. Thanks very much, guys.
Yeah, hi guys. Hope uh, hope everyone is is doing well. I feel like I've got the the big build up here, so hopefully I'll give you something uh, <laughs> something useful. Uh, we'll start off with with stocks, as as that's what I was talking about when I was coming in this morning about. Well, let me just bring this into picture, and uh, obviously you can see we just as of a couple of moments ago made a new all time high uh, in the S and P. Uh, can anything stop this market this year? Well. If we have a look on the longer time frame, you can see last year you had uh, in May where the phase one trade deal was looking less likely. Uh, we came down for a couple of weeks, went higher. Uh, and then in August we had the uh, devaluation of the Renimbi uh, above seven, and that led to a week or so of, of downward move. But I think it was a, another decent push higher if you look from that low from the 26th of December 2018. It's incredible move um, and if we think about this year uh, they may well not start phase two for now but they're going to and there's going to be bumps in the way but they're going to get a deal done so it begs the question is every dip here now just an opportunity to buy you've got Trump who is the favorite to win the election so unless the polls indicate otherwise then you know this market is going to remain elevated and he's going to do everything he can to, to get this done. You've seen his tweets before where he says, you know, this, uh, you know, if the Fed were this, if the trade deal was done, it's going to put X amount of thousand points on the Dow Jones. And, you know, he's not lying. He will do what it, it takes to get this market higher and higher. Uh, global slowdown doesn't, doesn't slow this market down uh, significantly. And is again, another opportunity to get long. Um, I was just saying, if, if you were paying someone to invest for you and, and they weren't in US equities, you'd be like, what? what? Why on earth not? Um, I'm not saying right from this moment it's going to go. Uh, we're above 3,300 uh, on the S&P. We're above 29,000 uh, on the Dow Jones. It didn't take long from uh, 27 to 28. Can uh, we get the 30,000? Can I bring my 30,000 uh, uh, Dow Jones hat into the office it seems a bit of a formality for now uh, if we want to start to the year we've had if you think of the Iran situation and we're on the all-time high right now so my, my opinion and, and bias for this year is uh, to get long at the best opportunities which are going to be any potential dips and, and that's what happened at the back end of last year and of course you know when this market does properly come down there's a long way for it to go but this year, you're going to have phase two deal going to start, yes, with the bumps, but they're buying opportunities. Trump most likely to win the election. The Fed very, very rarely make a policy change during an election year. So that is you know, going to be on the pause. And, they're definitely, and Trump is definitely not going to be happy if they were to raise rates. So if there was a change, it's going to be uh, to, to, to a cut or any decisions would be made you know, next year. So, yeah, I, f I favour that this market is going to drift till November uh, for that election on the 3rd. Having a look more intraday, uh, opportunity-wise, I think, you know, now we are just pushing higher, uh, certainly looking for areas of support to, to get in. Yesterday and, and the previous days have been quite choppy. Uh, but just identifying 32.95 as, as an area, we had some good support in that Asian session. That would be uh, a point of interest. The, the lows from yesterday, I'm just going to bring in a, a bit of a trend line here. You can see uh, the trend channel, but have held it up quite nicely. So again, if we were to get to that, that kind of point, I'd be interested. I'd, I'd uh, ideally wait to see how price reacts around there, but if it was to come in an hour or two's time, you're looking 32, 87, 88 uh, for an opportunity to get long. And same sort of patterns in the Dow and the NASDAQ, uh, all time highs. Can we buy lower down? Not much is going to change uh, the overall picture. And if it does, what an opportunity to get long uh, uh, a cheaper point. Having a look at currencies, Euro yesterday uh, pushed higher. <coughs> Last few days it has been. Um, those lows. <coughs> sorry, of uh, the most recent days, just getting pushed upwards, the highs as well. It's not a great trend channel, but like the one with oil to the downside, probably worth having something similar on. And 
in uh, just looking when, if we were to be more comfortable with price coming lower, or well, these lows and this trend, trend line has to go as well. Line in the sand today, yesterday's double top uh, from the overnight on uh, Tuesday and then Wednesday morning. Keep a watch on that, 111.78 on the futures. Below there, I'm a seller uh, towards the S1 and yesterday's low. If we have a look more closely at the highs, and just getting this trend line on from that top, you can see we're just now closing, or about to close, above this. One, two, three, now the fourth test through that, so Euro bulls may be slightly more happy. Can we get a push towards the high? It's not a big move, five ticks or so, five full ticks anyway, uh, but that's how I'd be looking at the Euro. So some key levels uh, in and around where we're trading, much like with the pound. We've got to keep a, a watch, no matter what happens, uh, on that daily trend line, which has offered such a good level of support. It'll be interesting to see what happens here uh, in a month's time, and we're looking at this level. Was it a 120? What an opportunity to buy, and suddenly we're now trading back at 133 uh, and beyond. Or has it been the right thing to do to be patient, wait for that break lower to target 128? But held superbly, so keep a, a watch on that. Let's get the pivots on, just a little more intraday. Uh, you can see similar to the euro when we are just drifting higher a bit of dollar weakness has been uh, in present so keep a, a watch on that trend channel we have this morning or almost this morning on the futures filled that gap which is usually obviously the case so 130.77 keep a watch on that uh, as another point of resistance where would you be happy to get short <coughs> well I'd say personally you want to wait for this trend line here the pivot's key 130.46 um, but below there, then you can start maybe looking to target that overall big trend line. And of course, the bigger move to the downside would happen there. Other strong resistance points, 131 handle, 131.08 on the futures. You've got the lows there from the 8th. You've got the highs from the 10th. You've got the top of this trend channel. You've got R2. Uh, could be a, a decent point uh, and level to, to have marked up there uh, as well. Also in the mix around there, you're going to have the, the overnight high on the 31st. You're going to have the the seventh high and potentially the third test of that there uh, as well. Have a quick look over at gold and oil to, to wrap it. You can see likewise with those currency pairs uh, where we've had a bit of dollar weakness. Gold is is following that that trend higher, grinding higher. Uh, whether that low has saved us, I've said this before. 30, 15, 37, 15, 34, 35 is a is a key zone. That's where I'd still be happy to to hold longs as long as this area holds. Um, to the upside, you know, I think you'd be pretty comfortable, and it's, again, it's a zone of targeting those highs. If we were to get above between 1563 and 68, give or take, we're just sort of in this range here. Is that opportunity to sell around 1563? You know, if equities keep pushing higher, then maybe uh, that's a great level to then target back down towards there. Either way, a wait and see. I feel for now, yes, there will be a couple of intraday opportunities perhaps you know looking uh, at those lows from yesterday's uh, and highs uh, from today which you can see we're not far away from just testing that now so obviously the opportunity here could be on a, on a break of that trend but the overall bigger picture top end of that range and bottom end of that range i keep an eye on this this gold as well along with those previous lows so above 15.55 you, you feel confident there could be a bit of a push doe's yesterday decent move to the downside uh, and then a full reversal. You think it was a central bank meeting uh, there um, in this trend channel. Still keep a, a watch on that. I would say for uh, this market, we tested the top end of that this morning, and it held quite nicely. Uh, and the bottom up has got this more of a trend line. But you can see we're, we're in there. And the opportunity for me is above, or it is below. What one do I prefer? I don't really have a bias for now. I'd rather let the market tell me what's going on and. Uh, well, we'll have to wait and see for, for that one there. Pivot looks relatively key. Some interesting support around 57.75 as well. The high, the top end of that trend uh, channel is also yesterday's high as well. So it could be a bit of relief if all of that goes uh, as well. As usual, any questions, please uh, do let us know. Uh, and also in the, in the chat on, below on, on YouTube, let me know reasons why uh, in November you don't think equities are going to be on their high. It's always interesting to, to hear the other side. Uh, it's just my opinion that Trump's going to win. A trade deal is going to get done, whether it has any bumps or not, and they're not going to raise rates uh, as well.
but yeah any questions please do let us know uh, and i'll be obviously on the chat throughout the day so i hope you'll have a, a good trading session and catch you all later on